Hypotheticals aren't. I do, wait, do you think an idealism is when you construct a hypothetical? Do you think those mean the same thing? You're going to lecture me on dialectical materialism. There's no and you're point struggling in having this. this discussion. Is my point. Can you answer that question? Do you think idealism means when you construct a hypothetical? Have you read you Capital? It's full of hypotheticals. That has nothing to do with reality, and you think that that gets you closer to the truth. That is idealism because you are finding. You are so making nice. the ideal conscious processes of thought your basis for truth idealism is and not I'm what you I, my basis i see for finding truth i see the, the issue you world think world idealism world. is when you think which is why you don't yeah okay all right so um yeah thank you for for talking for agreeing to talk to me um i i just i have i i want to set this up by saying there is overlap between our audiences and um, some of the uh, some of the people um, who watch your stream and watch mine uh, have told me that I should reach out to you and talk to you, and they said you would be reasonable. I don't watch a ton of your content, you know, so I, you know, I'm I'm taking their word for it and gonna talk. I want to talk to you in good faith, and I know that um, there has been what some might consider drama or beef going on between you, me, and Luna, and some other people. Um, developing for some time, so I just want to address that and give you the opportunity to respond to some some questions and things like that. So, does that all sound like what we kind of agreed to in the emails? Does that yeah, my pleasure. Deal? No, this is a, this is a bit of a novelty for me. Normally, when people disagree with me, they sort of just take shots uh, on Twitter. Uh, I actually have mm -hmm. a lot of respect for people who like hashing it out. Uh, you know, whatever uh, whatever you know, my reputation might proceed. Uh, I do actually enjoy. Uh, just calmly talking about disagreements, you know. Um, but yeah, hit me up. You sent me an email the other day, and you know, some people in chat were complaining, like you put out a video shit talking me. But uh, in the email, to your credit, you did say, "Hey, I'm gonna put this video out, so don't interpret this as some kind of like sneaky, you know." Um, so yeah, I don't think they have anything to complain about. Yeah, and then also, you know, people have differences about what's appropriate and what's not. Um, I the, One of the reasons I put the video out before the conversation was because I wanted to kind of formulate my thoughts and have some sort of basis to speak on, uh, you know. So, I, you know, yeah, I do want to I do want to try to get your... Yeah, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to some of the things I said. I, I doubt you've had time to watch it because it was a very long video and, um, and uh, you know, it's only been like maybe 11 hours since I up it so no i have i'm afraid i have not i saw some people in my community uh reacting to it some liked it some didn't you know i uh I, i'm known for having a disagreeable community so i guess i'll see when i see um wait a minute let me just okay so um all right so so yeah i think we're all on the same page about that stuff so the meta discussion i guess is out of the way <laughs> we can talk about the real the real issues yeah hit me up okay so I, I, there's three things, and I told you in the email, like three things I really wanted to kind of talk about. And um, the first thing is about, uh, and, I, and I don't expect this to be a very long discussion, the first part. I just, I wanted to um, just talk about the responsibility that we have as creators that have a large platform, right? So like uh, you and I both have pretty large platforms. Um, I've got like over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. You have... I don't know. What are you up to now? You're, you're, you're pretty big. <laughs> well, it's like 360, 370, somewhere there, I think. Yeah. Well, you have a ton of people watch your stream. I mean, that's that you have very impressive numbers in terms of watching your live streams. So um, I think it's safe to say that we both have pretty substantial platforms. Um, so uh, I guess the first question I would ask is just in general, do you agree with me that when somebody has a large platform, it comes with a certain responsibility? Yes. Okay, I, I figured you'd, you'd agree with me on that. Um, and and do you also agree that part of that responsibility is trying to develop an understanding of your audience? And because you know your audience is not a monolith, my audience is not a monolith. There are different kind of like sort of divisions within every audience, right? So you kind of have to get to know your audience and understand how they are. The different sections of your audience are likely to react and just kind of. Um, be familiar with your audience, right? And 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 so, um, I mean, do you agree with that? I guess I'll ask first. I don't know if it's a moral obligation, but it's definitely a good idea. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, I, here's why I think that I, you know, I don't know about the the word moral, but here's why I think it's important for people, especially doing political 
uh, activity, you know, like discussing political topics and that sort of thing. I think it's important because obviously we influence our audiences, right? And if you were doing like unboxing streams or just like let's play videos or whatever, you know, I think that the, the degree of responsibility can vary. But when you're talking about political things, you're influencing people politically and you also have to know that there will be like mutual impact. So like you might say things and then they'll go out and do things and vice versa, right? So I, that, I guess that's, that's the, the basis of my next question, which is don't, do you, you must realize that because you debate people on the far right quite a bit and um, because you just, because of the nature of what you do with your debate streams, and that sort of thing, that there are a large number of right wing people who watch your show. I don't know if there are a large number of right-wing people who watch my show. There are probably is a good number of politically undifferentiated people, but at least in the communities that I've seen and cultivated, my YouTube comments, my Discord, my Reddit, whatever, um, I think uh, the, the, the closest right bent I have is an annoying group of liberals who insist on watching me. Um, apart from that, I don't think I have many hard right uh, followers. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I'm, and I'm not, I, I don't want to use any like loaded terms like audience or followers or, or community. I'm just, I just think that it stands to reason that if you're regularly having discussions with people on the far right, there will be some overlap between your audiences. Some of them are going to come over and like hate watch you, you know, <laughs> like I, I even get hate watchers on my channel. So I know there's an element of that. Um, but yeah, I guess my point is um, if you know that there are right wingers, even if it's a, in, in you know law of large numbers, you have thousands of people that watch your stream. So even if it's like a small percentage of your audience, that means still going to mean there's like maybe maybe hundreds of people you know that are fascist or racist watching. That's that's possible. I don't want to debate about the numbers or whatever. But I guess okay. So I'm going to move on to the next point of my, I guess my platform here, and then and then I'll let you just totally respond to, to my point because I'm almost done making my point. Mm -hmm. So. If you have, uh, if it's true that there are any right wingers watching you, that's that's one thing. And then another way to know, I guess, a metric of whether you have right wingers or not is how people engage after you've done something, right? So, like, if I make a video, I'm going to try to gauge the outcomes. I'm going to try to watch what people are saying on social media about it. I'm going to go to Reddit and check that out. I'm going to check the comments on my channel or whatever. And so, what I've noticed, and a lot of people have noticed, is a pattern where whenever you talk about somebody who is, shall we say, marginalized, you know, black or trans or person of color or what have you, that there's a tendency for those people to um, receive a lot of kind of like after effect collateral damage in terms of harassment, threats, uh, and, and other kinds of like, you know, disturbing attacks like that. Now, I've seen it happen with Luna because I'm married to her. We spend all of our time together. I monitor, I, I help her uh, administrate her comments and that sort of thing. And I also know other people who have shown me similar um, results, you know. So I just, I guess my first question is, are you aware of that or, or would you deny that that's something that happens? I think I'd mostly deny it. You know, there's a whole uh, narrative about my community harassing people, but in spite of nearly three years of trying to track down the people actually doing this, I've yet to be provided a single piece of evidence of it actually happening. Usually the initial claim is some very severe, you know, uh, Vosh community, you know, harassing, like really bad stuff, right? But then I get some screenshots and it's usually people just being kind of mean, which I'm fine with. I don't have a problem with people being mean to people I don't like. Um... I, I, I like I guess it's it's possible that this happens. It's just not something that I've been provided substantive evidence of. If it can be provided, I'll ban those people from my community. But um, yeah, outside of that, I yeah. don't think it's um, I just Sorry, don't I think it's that much of an issue. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I guess I'm not going to press it too much farther. I will say that like this is the kind of thing that it's kind of hard to. Um, substantiate Litigate and substantiate right because like so for instance i can just tell you from my personal experience that you know since i literally look at luna's comments every single day on her youtube channel i kind of get an idea like she does get racist comments every day you know and you know that that's probably true um just because any person of color black person on the internet that's putting themselves out there and talking about politics is going to receive that kind of thing so she does get those kinds of comments every day but every time you've done a video where you talked about her suddenly there's like a big uptick in the number of those kinds of racists and and just terrible kinds of disturbing comments and the only other time i've ever seen that happen it's only happened twice before and once was after we had the discussion with destiny 
and once was after the armchair historian and her had a little bit of a back and forth. And it's never, ever happened again. Lots of other people have criticized Luna, but those are the only three examples. And so something tells me, it's just an, it, here, I guess let me put it this way. My instinct is there's something about, going on there. And I, if you think that that matters, I would encourage you to take it seriously and investigate it more on your own and see if you can find out more and just keep that in the back of your mind, I guess, as you move forward when you talk about people who are vulnerable. Now, Luna is like, we, Luna and I are in our 30s and we have each other and we're stable. But, and the reason I, yeah, I, I'm not trying to preach at you, but I know that you're aware that there are people out there who are more vulnerable. There are people who are younger. There are people who have mental instability and might be inclined towards self-harm and that sort of thing. So I guess I'm just saying from one big content creator to the other, it's something that I do is try to be careful about cult how I cultivate my audience. I try to identify the strengths and strengthen those. And I try to identify weaknesses and, and negate those as much as possible over time. So I'm not trying to preach at you, but that's something I wanted to make you aware of that, that that's something that I've seen happening personally with Luna's audience. So oh, I, I guess saw I that I saw that tweet from Luna where she screenshotted some gripers quote tweeting her and said that they were sort of insinuated that that was a product of her mentioning or talking with me um i mean i'm a large content creator there are people who hate watch me i also have uh oh wait hold on i'm getting some feedback from your end when i talk um do you know what that might be i did it just start or uh, it no it's, on? it's been happening uh it's like a, a sort of um static and like a, a a gain pitch kind of did that did that fix it at all let me see talking talk yeah okay wait i think that did yeah okay yeah thank you okay, yeah. Sorry about that. um i saw those screen traps um oh people are saying my voice is too loud in your stream i don't know if that if if that's I'll probably the case just both problems simultaneously i think so <laughs> oh okay well there you go um yeah, obviously, as a product of my size, beefing with me is going to cause a lot of engagement, and there might be negative consequences to that for, like, uh, marginalized people, because I'm broadly known on the right. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a way to directly attribute that to me. I know they're not my audience. I don't think I have a substantial griper audience at my beck and call. Uh, I just don't know if yeah, there's well, anything I can really do about that, because at that point, it's not even about my community. It's just about the size of my channel and exposure given to people that I disagree with. And we're working off tenuous connections as well. I mean, it could very well be that even if I was perfectly responsible with all my engagement, merely the act of being signal boosted uh, to, to the level that one is when they engage with me would then increase the likelihood of that kind of negative attention. There's just, it feels like the link here is tenuous enough that I don't have a direct control over it or really even an indirect control. The only solution would be, I think, to just not ever engage with, positively or negatively, any other figures who are um, marginalized, which, which probably wouldn't be good. That doesn't seem like a sustainable uh, solution, I think. Well, okay, there there are a few things there. I guess I'll push back a little bit again. So the first thing would be, you know, every time, there are some things you can do. Every time I talk about somebody who I disagree with who could be the receiving that kind of, you know, hate, like, um, I, I'm very careful to tell my audience, like, do not harass this person, blah, blah, blah. That That will help with your actual audience, your community, the people that you actually like uh enjoy but then also you just I, I don't know i just um i think you could be more selective about some of the things that you say about certain people because there have been instances like with for instance when you talked about luna um i don't think that calling her a useless stepchild of vietnam um i think that that might fan the flames of like racial uh problems i'm not saying that you were intentionally being racist that's not the point there but i think that having that kind of super vitriolic uh statement could perhaps fan the flames. I think maybe when talking about people in marginalized positions, you could perhaps just stick to the facts and to the ideas more instead of bringing up the personal vitriol, vitriolic remarks like that, calling them stupid, calling you know, using ableist slurs and that sort of thing. I think that might be one way you could kind of control some of that. Um, I, you know, do you do you like completely disown and denounce the people who have made racial comments about Luna since you made your stream about her? Oh, anyone who makes racist comments towards Luna is either not a part of my community or if they are, should be removed from it. I'm not a racist and I don't tolerate racism on any of my platforms. 
Um, if it really is like hate followers who are watching or simply responding to an increase in visibility, though, nothing I say will change anything. I mean, I could have a positive interaction. In fact, I know this because I have had positive engagements with people, uh, marginalized people, either race, gender, sexuality, who then got harassment after talking with me, not just from the rest of the left for deigning to talk with me, of course, but just as a product of being made visible, you know? So if, if, if that is the group responsible predominantly for the real vitriol, I don't think there's anything I could do other than be silent. In terms of, like, harassment from my community, like the tone that I set, I'm okay with it. Um, I'm, I'm generally quite mean to, to conservatives or people that I don't like. I think that's okay. I think that the, um, the vitriol is sort of a, an essential component. You, you, okay, you don't think that when you said that Luna's a, a useless stepchild of Vietnam, that that could, even if you didn't intend for it to have racial undertones, right? Because intention here doesn't matter. I think you'd agree with me. It, it, it's, the, it's the outcomes that matter. You don't think that that's the kind of thing that can stoke racially charged responses from people or well, sure, encourage you you can get that from criticizing china too right like i hate china but if you talk about that long enough folks who are actually racist are going to catch on you can only so much you can do about china that. without calling a, a, a somebody a useless stepchild of china for instance you know well, i mean like that's if they a were weird if they were a chinese something. if they were a chinese but nationalist mean, a useless stepchild of vietnam i don't really understand what you're trying to say there Oh, I don't know. I pr throw out probably like a hundred or two hundred insults. I don't even remember the one you're saying right now. I'm sure okay, so in yeah, context it was very remember funny. remember what you said tells me you weren't being too careful when you talked about her as an individual. Like, well, I can't remember every... I can't remember I'm, every insult I deliver over a whole stream. I mean, that's hours every day I'd have to log. I don't have that much storage space yeah, in my head. I don't know. I, I think you could be careful. I think you could be more careful about how you talk about well, other people. But okay. What you've said but there... I, I think this is going nowhere, so... Well, I just want to say, you what, what you've said there, that doesn't cross my threshold for irresponsible treatment. Um, I mean, obviously... And I'm not... This isn't an effort to poison the well obviously you have a closer relationship with luna than i do that's uh kind of an understatement i do recognize I that she's a person yeah that's yeah, part of being well, you know <laughs> right right well we're gonna have different perspectives on an acceptable level of of vitriol towards people that you don't like um i i i guess the thing that always weirds me out a little bit is i'm very mean to conservatives uh on my channel nobody seems to mind that much but then when there are people on the left who have ideas that I think are just as pernicious, you know, all of a sudden, uh, people, you know, they get very up in arms about it. I don't understand the double standard personally. Um, I think that it's, I can't speak to that because I don't, I don't have enough insight into or optics into that. So what do you think it's okay just, if, if I was, I'm just asking, cause I, I just want to yeah. know if it's a broad opposition or if there's kind of like a specific favoritism here. If I was doing a video, uh, on like, I don't know, Ben Shapiro. And I was just throwing them out there, you know, all the insults, nothing anti-Semitic or whatever, but, you know, just insults. Um, do you think there's an issue with that vitriol or do you think that's uh, a fine thing? If to it's do? motivated by things like race and or being trans or whatever, then, of course, there's a problem. Even if like, for instance, like, uh, you know, like like if there's uh, if you were if you're debating a, a conservative who was gay and then you made some kind of comment that could be construed as, as referencing their sexuality. I'm not saying you did that. I'm just, I mean, I'm speaking hypothetically. And then that person got harassed for being gay. Even if they're conservative, I certainly wouldn't say that that's acceptable. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think that I'm, I'm saying you, I'm just saying the hypothetical you, the, a person who did that would have to take responsibility for the role that they played in that. Uh, and oh, I hold think on. that when you're what? throwing out insults, you need to be thinking about the potential ripple effects that the words you use can have when you're talking yeah, to thousands sure. of people. Well, I think the ripple effect is, I suppose I dislike her, and I'm okay with people in my audience disliking her, but if, if the racial comments, like the racism, is really coming from, like, the Groyper hate followers, I just don't think there's a relationship between the language that I use, you know, this language at least, which is, I don't think, racialized, um, and, and the outcomes. Hold on, somebody linked the stepchild thing. I just want to hear it. It's six seconds. One second. I'm just... Yeah, the modern Vietnamese government has produced little fucking off stepchild bastard children like Luna Oi here. Yeah, the modern Vietnamese government has produced. Oh yeah, it's a yeah, it's 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 a comment on um, Vietnamese uh, education producing like nationalist defenders. Yeah, so so she, that would be like the stepchild comment. What is the stepchild connection there? Well, like you know uh, that she's five years older than you. I I mean, 
I don't understand why you keep calling her a child and seems kind of like overly demeaning. I don't know what basis you have for that. I'm okay with being demeaning. With the stepchild okay. thing, when I think of like, for, it was like the redheaded stepchild kind of thing. Like the idea that like, uh, you know, like a bunch of like sort of uh, uh, children running around, you know, it's like 20 of them and you can remember the names of 16 or so. You know, I think it's a salient critique of the way governments will sort of indoctrinate their did, constituents. Did you not have made that point? You know, knowing what you know and knowing and being conscious of the way that certain people that watch your show, could you just not have made that point with a little bit less personal vitriol? I guess I just don't understand the. I don't. But understand. I'm okay like, with I the talk vitriol. To people all the time that I that I don't like, but I don't. Um, I don't make weird comments about them like that. I'm okay with the vitriol. Them. Also, to be fair, I'm pretty sure Luna's been quite vitriolic to me for a while. Not Luna to say it's not about me for months on end until you decide to do another stream about her. That's that's something I can tell you for sure. Oh, sure. Not to say it's and not mutual. Go around talking about you all the time. It's it's always in self defense. I mean, I have to say that that I've. I, I've been Wait, very keyed in on that. I think there was at least one time she started something, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'm not, this isn't like a who started it type thing. I'm just saying that I think the, the vitriol certainly is mutual. Um, I, don't, I just, I, I don't see an issue with being vitriolic. It's fine. If anything, you know, I'm working on maybe trying to be a little more vitriolic. I feel like the left online gives way too much of a pass to certain types of ideas. Uh, some types of nationalism. Why do you think that that is beneficial I mean, what do you think that that what 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 end does that serve? I don't get it. I don't understand how calling somebody a useless stepchild of Vietnam serves any purpose. Well, it was part of a broader like bit on the nationalism thing, but anti-nationalism is a strong component. I don't get the of connection. Like, if you said Luna's a Luna's a rabid nationalist or something, then like that would that would have a connection to what you're saying. I got I don't under I don't understand it. I I, I don't I don't see this. I don't, I don't feel like this conversation is going anywhere. I I don't think that you're. Um, I don't think you're. I don't think you get what I'm saying. So no, well, I understand I what you're saying. You're saying that I was too mean. I just don't mind being mean. It's oh, not I'm fine with me. And I'm using the personal situation of Luna because I'm familiar with that. But there have been num a number of people have come forward and said that after you talked about them on stream, they got a lot of hate. And I'm just saying that if that were me and that were my audience and that were my platform, and somebody was saying that, I would take it very seriously and I would work very hard to do everything I could I have. to. Decrease as much as possible. No, you're saying that you want to go forward and be more vitriolic towards. Well, the thing is, I mean, we're I think about people of color, transphobic people, or trans people, uh, uh, you know, gay people, or whatever. You're saying you want to be more vitriolic to people who you disagree with, who are marginalized, not I think less vitriolic. The main so, thing is that I do take it seriously, and having taken it seriously, I've only found evidence to take it less seriously. Because this has happened before, this basic pattern, and I always have it investigated. I have mods, that, I have a team. It is a pattern of behavior. I have a crack team, you know, and they, this always mm -hmm. gets looked into. I can never find evidence of real harassment. Either it's just people being mean to them, which again, I'm totally okay with, and I don't what think do that's... What do you consider violent? I mean, like, like I don't know. What... You don't think that if somebody's telling, if, if a bunch of people are coming forward and it seems like a pattern of behavior, because you said it's a pattern of behavior and you're having to investigate it all the time. I mean, I don't have this problem. I don't have to go out launching investigations with like a crack mod NSA team to go do like investigations because I'm not constantly hearing from people that when I talk about them on stream that they're getting a bunch of harassment over race and gender and sexuality and that kind of thing. But that's what. I'm hearing people say about your oh. audience. So what's the, I'm, I don't, I don't know what the it's difference is between I investigated. my- Wait, hold on. Somebody just linked a tweet where Luna is essentially calling me a pedophile. I think I'm okay with the mean. I usually try to proportion it to my dislike for people. Um, I feel like I know Luna- the you're talking about. Do you want to read the tweet and see, tell me exactly what it says? Vosh gets she, kicked off of platforms for saying cracker, but not for saying pedophilia can be good for children. Sick fucking world. Which is an exact quote that you said. No, it's not. You play the video that it's linked to. Tell me that it's not. The a video cuts quote. me off mid sentence. It literally cuts me off in you between. Off. You did say that though. She referenced something you actually said. It is possible. Hold on. You could defend yourself and say that that was child, taken out of context or whatever, but she didn't call you a pedophile, and, for a and she was referencing something you actually said, which is a different situation than being vitriolic to, vitriolic towards people. For absolutely no reason. So do you do you whatsoever. think that no signal reason. boosting misinformation with the intent of sort of painting a person as a pedophile isn't like it's interesting that you would take issue with saying a person's a stepchild of the country that they're from, but the idea of like signal boosting disingenuous uh, far right 
you know, pedo jacketing um, that, that was literally cut off mid-sentence uh, isn't itself bad faith or disingenuous. Like, that's really weird to me. I, I don't understand. Is it like a perceived vulnerability thing? Because my community well, is there, there is a uh, there is a power differential for one thing that is true, but also that's not the only thing. The, the other thing is she wasn't just talking about you; she was talking about the way platforms work. I think that you would agree mm. that getting kicked off for saying cracker was ridiculous, right? Do you agree with that? I would agree so that like calling me a pedophile there. is is uh, being vitriolic. I I don't think there's any working around that. She didn't call you a pedophile. She didn't call you a pedophile. Non compete. Come on. She did it. She, she she said that what she said that she thinks that what you said in that clip is worse than saying cracker. I mean, if you cut together a bunch of words spliced from different streams and arranged right. them in a way to implicate me, and then but, looked at that and said, "Huh, look at that. That's would interesting." It, would that you, wouldn't technically would be calling you, me. Uh, I don't know what to say. I I, I can just tell you that there's to me there's a difference between quoting what somebody actually said in in a specific context when you're commenting on a platform versus calling it's somebody actually a, quoting a, a me child of vietnam it's not quoting which me. is really just an insult based on the fact that she's vietnamese that's the only tangible piece of evidence about her identity that you that you addressed or even you didn't address her positions you addressed like like you didn't call her a nationalist you called her a stepchild of vietnam in a it's, section it's where i was by the fact so, that hold on this would be a lot easier for you if you didn't form your opinions based exclusively off the Twitter clips. Uh, in the whole video, I where you can, you can, you can, you can find the section. No, I'm, I'm talking about the stepchild thing. I have an opinion okay. on whether or not I'm a pedophile. And it's that the people who go out of their way to call me one because they can't address my real arguments are bottom feeding scum. And I really like the idea that okay, you would complain. Wait, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay. The idea that people right. would complain about vitriol, I mean, not even about like the arguments used, right? But like in terms of vitriol and, and what, because I made a joke about her being a nationalist, like is stepchild like a slur now? This, this, this concern for me, stepchild I just, I don't Vietnam, get it. did mention her nationality, which is, okay. I, I don't know her ethnicity. Yeah. I think she's a Vietnamese nationalist. Yes. Stepchild of Vietnamese, uh, uh, propagandizing education. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. I don't, I don't even. I don't even think that's particularly vitriolic. I'm pretty sure I said worse stuff. Okay. Um, All right, we're, we're, we're really just going around in circles now. So I, I don't know. I, I have nothing else to say about this. Do you have anything else to say? No, I suppose I not. That, okay. Um, do you want to talk about anything? I, I have a few other questions. I yeah, can ask. Well, you, yeah um, there, were, there were three topics um, that you mentioned. Uh, hold on. I didn't, I didn't have the email up. Um, well, you said the first one was on targeting marginalized people, and the second one was a, a perceived lack of understanding of Luna's video and of dialectical materialism, and then the third one was the dishonest rhetorical tricks I use in my discussions, and I'm happy to talk about either or both, uh, if you'd like. Okay, so I think that, um... In your video, that, so specifically, just focusing on the stream you had about Luna. Um, now, you, so because you said that you know people that don't address your opinions, blah, blah, your 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 actual positions. I feel like you spent two hours. You know, you call people that who who don't address your actual positions bottom feeding scum. You spent and call two me hours. pedophiles. That that's the part that okay. bothers well, me the most. Categorically, Luna did not call you a pedophile. She said she quoted something that you said, it wasn't and I a quote. do. I do happen to agree. There, I, I don't think there's any situation where an adult can have a child, a, a sexual relationship with a child, and it has a positive out, outcome. So, if you had actually seen disagree. the full bit that was clipped from, then you the would agree. Bit. You saw the full bit, not just the Twitter bit, yes. but the full thing in which I yeah, was constructing your, your a rule. Foundation utility. was that uh -huh. there can be some situations where an adult and a child can have a positive outcomes. You didn't say. It, Anyway, it's, it's in, totally so immaterial. For just well, no, it's 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 important. So, in a consequentialist sense, you can easily construct a situation where essentially anything is fine. Can here, I'll ask you. Just follow through with me thirty seconds. No, then I we'll don't. Be done. I, wait, I'm not an idealist. I'm not going to talk about hypotheticals that don't have any bearing on material reality. That is. Wait, wait, hold on. 
B, wait, hold on. I, I'm not wait, gonna wait do hold that. on. Wait, wait, wait. Mar- first of all, with we're not talking, about, talking like, hypothetical situations wait. where adults can molest we're... children and it has a positive outcome. You're not the one talk- talking. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. First of all, Marx was a philosopher. It's not idealism. Wait, no, hold on. Wait, you can't you can't move away from this. Okay, hold on. I'm not letting you paint me like this and then run the fuck away. Wait, hold on. Wait, you just you have to stop talking for one second, okay? Hold on. So imagine, all right? Imagine aliens come down to Earth oh, and they say This is absolutely ridiculous, Vosh. You you've lasted six seconds so Imagine far. Imagine okay? aliens. This is as hypothetical idealism as you can get. You're totally, you're like you're literally dis- like you're uh, you're like a honeymoon virgin. You gotta last longer than six seconds. Just give me a second, okay? I let you did I not let you talk for a long time when you were establishing your premises? Come on. I'm not going to talk about hypotheticals with you. You don't have it's to. Then you don't. You then you don't have to talk. You just have to listen. You just have to listen. Okay. Now you can imagine a situation in which aliens come down to Earth and they say, "We're going to blow up the whole planet unless you kill this innocent kid." Now, in a consequentialist sense, <laughs> killing that innocent kid. Right. I know. Right. So follow through. Follow through. So in a consequentialist. This is Okay. In a, so in a consequential, I know an inability to grasp philosophy is one of my biggest issues with Luna. It makes sense that it's it would apply to both of you. This is that's it's not idealism. what I. This philosophy and idealism aren't the same thing. Those don't mean the same thing. You can Wikipedia no, you're, them. No, you're you're basing your you're constructing hypothetical situations that have no bearing. Hypotheticals in reality aren't. I, wait, do you think an idealism is when you construct a hypothetical? Do you think those mean the same thing? You're going to lecture me on dialectical materialism. There's no and you're point struggling in having this. this discussion is my point. Can you answer that question? Do you think idealism means when you construct a hypothetical? Have you if read you Capital? It's hypothetical full of hypotheticals. It has nothing to do with reality, and you think that that gets you closer to the truth. That is idealism because you are finding – you are right. making the ideal conscious – processes of thought your basis for truth idealism is and not what you not my basis i see for finding truth i see the is issue the you think idealism is when you think which is why you don't listen no. if you read if you read oh, das oh. kapital okay no, you'll actually find hypotheticals they're actually kind of ubiquitous um look Anyway, in that grounded situ- in reality, though they're grounded in actual things that happen. So just let's Until finish the point. We can move on another- if you let me talk for ten seconds, okay? So in that situation, you could argue consequentially that the outcomes would be good to murder that innocent child because the Earth doesn't get blown up. Then, because the Twitter bit cuts me off literally mid sentence, you follow on from that point to talk about how a rule utilitarian could have a categorical opposition to the murder of children in spite of that. The whole argument was one against the predation of children, but far right people like to clip me out of context because it's easier than debunking me. That's it. That was it. Okay. All right. That is idealism, though. That's not what <laughs> okay. idealism means. It is. When you think that you can find any truth that brings you like like when when like if you use a hypothetical that's grounded in reality. Then that's that's not this that isn't what idealism productive. means. This isn't it's not you don't know what that term means. Well, what do you think idealism means? So do you mean idealism like in relationship to materialism in the dialectical sense, like dialectical idealism versus dialectical materialism? Because the Hegelian concept has that nothing would... to do with the construction of hypotheticals. No, it doesn't. But it does. But no, it does. It does. So, so yes, it, it does, because idealism is the position that the basis for finding truth, and this actually does move towards what I wanted to talk to you about, so I'm fine with talking about this now, because you're, because you do, I do think you misunderstand the difference between materialism and idealism, and I think you don't understand the relationship between Hegel and Marx and Engels, and I don't think that you understand the difference between historical materialism and dialectical materialism. So these are all things I did want to ask you about. So, idea, so the, Hegel's whole dialectic and the problem that Marx and Engels had with Hegel was that he sought truth on the basis of the ideal and consciousness okay Marx and Engels broke with that and they thought that material the material world in objective sense data empirical sense data is the primary basis for truth but they were not empiricists they were not positivists meaning they didn't think you could only find truth in sense data in empirical data Okay, do do you agree with all of those things I just said, or do you know those things? No, I I don't think that's correct. I, I think that's simplified in some respects and incorrect in others. All right, well, just tell me what you think idealism is, Vaj. The dialectical disagree. So first of all, idealism is a philosophical tradition dating back millennia. 
uh, what you refer to as ideal, like, I don't know, there are like 20 different kinds of idealism, depending on what you're pulling from. The, 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 the juxtaposition usually posed against what Marx wrote was Hegelian dialectical idealism, which was the okay. idea that social advancements, that ideas that human civilization was moved forward as a product of the antagonisms which arise in people's thoughts as they have competing right. values and virtues which fight against each other and you achieve synthesis, which is ideally an advancement of the idea, right, of the, of the concept. Okay, yes. And Marx is... Can I stop you for one moment? Sure. Can I stop you for one moment? Okay. So, an example of that, I think, and one of the big problems we have on the left today, and a problem that I've seen you have in your discussions, is that we have these hypothetical discussions about what we should do or shouldn't do, or after the revolution, will this happen or will this exist, and blah, blah, blah. And we construct, hypoth and we construct hypothetical scenarios about the future, and then we think that that's what we should base all of our praxis and activism on. So in other words, we come up with the ideas first, which Engels described as utopianism, Marx and Engels described as utopianism, and then we think like, okay, we've got this perfect vision for where we want to be, now we have to get from here to there, and we have to dogmatically stay that course. That would be, would you agree that that's an idealist basis for moving a movement for a political movement? I think it's utopian, but I don't think it's a dialectically idealist concept. I think you could frame that belief system through dialectical materialism just fine. You, you could frame that system through dialectical materialism? Frame, frame a utopian system? Or what do you mean? I don't understand what you well, mean. Dialectical materialism is only a, a mode of analysis. It's a theory to explain the, the movement, the evolution of human behavior, uh, a society, social developments. You know, you could apply it to anything. You can analyze any system, any society through the lens of dialectical materialism. It doesn't have to be, uh, it, there isn't like, there isn't yeah. like a dialectically materialist way of doing a thing, you know, outside the process of analysis. You can't like make a civilization and go like this time, we'll do it dialectically yeah, material. The point is that uh, you're, you're putting the cart before the horse if you say, this would be a perfect society and you know, a, a priori, you, you will find out through praxis what works and what doesn't. That was a big important thing that Marx and Engels pointed out, was that you can only find truth through practice and praxis. I'm not a utopian. I agree that it is dumb to conceptualize an ideal society. And okay, then so when to... you conceptualize things with aliens and things that don't happen on planet Earth, that's a useless rhetorical strategy. Oh my God, this is what you were running truth. back to? No, okay. Yes. So, no. I'll, let me explain. And please listen, this can be instructive, okay? There is a massive okay. difference between framing your pragmatic advocacy for a political system based on a utopian vision of a future that you don't have material conditions to account for and the construction of a hypothetical to illustrate the dynamics of a moral system. If you read Capital, I promise you, okay, you will system. find Ooh, hypotheticals that are very concept. outlandish. Hold on. Your, your whole thing, you believe that you can construct a moral system where you can, you know, before I didn't construct it, it's just rule utilitarianism. You can't, the, the material conditions determine what is morally acceptable and what's not. When the French resistance what? were blowing Nazis, that was okay because the material conditions they were in. What? Right? Do you agree with that? But it's not what? always okay to just go blow people up. No, like there are those certain are conditions where it's acceptable and some where it's not. Those have nothing to do with each other. No, I'm not a moral relativist. Wait, do you think slavery was moral because back then people thought it was moral? That's exactly the opposite of what I'm saying. The material saying conditions of 16th century slaves. agriculture demanded the existence of slavery. Did, do you think that's moral then? Like, uh, what? That's my point, is that it has... That I don't... I'm, I, I believe... I'm a, I am a... My morality stems from dialectical... Like, so let me put it this way. But material dialectical materialism is isn't a moral system. It's just a, a, an analysis of history. Those are okay. This is these Why are the people who think, criticize my philosophy. Man. Here's the where you're wrong because you are conflating empiricism and and uh, positivism and determinism with dialectical materialism. No, that's but what Luna the, one was of the doing. Things that Marx and Engels pointed out, Vosh, is that through conscious activity we can impact the material world and we can make changes. And so, for instance, people can liberate themselves by developing mass movements, but they have to develop them with an understanding of the material processes of reality. If you try to develop, so for instance, of course, all poor people don't want to be poor anymore, right? But like, if you have false consciousness and you don't have a firm grasp on how material processes work and how the world actually develops and how things can develop and how applying your consciousness 
two material conditions will develop reality. If you don't have that, then you will fail and fail and fail again. That's why Engels and Marx wrote Socialism, Utopian, and Scientific, because they wanted to stop the... They were act... Remember, they were, they were organizers. They were activists. They were actually going out. Uh, they were members of groups. They were doing things, you know, and they had praxis. And they were so tired of having hypothetical conversations with people... There's a you know, difference between there's a difference between opposition to constructing a hypothetical entirely and opposition to the idea of basing one's entire political advocacy off of hypotheticals and nothing else. But that's because pragmatic advocacy for a political system and ethical systems are two different things. Hypotheticals are the only things that you can really use to construct a normative uh, ethical system because you have to isolate, because first where of all, this, you know, where are you getting this information from? Or is this something you just came up with? Or where, 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 what, is, what is this? What are, you, what are you talking about? Okay, if you're constructing an ethical system, like, or, or, or I guess learning to understand what one. It, wait, what's an what's a ethical system? What's a moral system? A normative process by which you determine whether an action or a person is good or bad. In my case, an action, because I'm not a uh, uh, um, virtue ethicist. Uh, okay. And you think, do you think that, that you can make one moral system that applies in all conditions or like what are you talking about yeah the, really goal, the goal would the goal would be to construct a normative ethical system that's universally applicable it is a constant that's subject idealism. of debate in philosophy that's idealism that is not Mark idealism Engels that's that no that's not what idealism it means it is because you're saying that you can hypothetically construct you're saying that like if you sat down and thought hard enough you had a big enough piece of paper and you wrote down enough if then bullion logic statements you could construct uh, exactly what is morally correct in any given situation in your mind. Well, the difficulty usually isn't whether something is good or bad. It's whether or not we can assemble all the necessary information to determine whether or not it's good or bad. The like, hypotheticals are the easy, that's isolating what, factor. That's what Martin Engels, that was their big breakthrough. That's what made them, they synthesized empiricism and positivism of people like Hume and Ricardo and Smith and the idealism of Hegel. And they realized that there's actually this dialectical relationship between material reality, material conditions, and human consciousness. It, but this, that, that, that that's not a matter of to, ethics. That, if we're talking about ethics, you need hypotheticals because they allow you to isolate conditions that you can use to determine the frameworks of your system. If you're only using practical examples for an ethical consideration, then you're post hoking everything that happens. You're like, well, was that train crash bad? And you're like, well... Well, uh, I don't have a system for this, uh, and you, you're like working through it. The, it's it, di yeah, dialectical materialism is just like this. Dialectical materialism is a system devised to allow us to analyze the world and to provide us a framework for understanding. That's what an ethical. Marx and Engels, Uto so socialism, science, utopian, and scientific wrote. The final causes of all social changes and political revolutions are to be sought not in men's brains but in men's better insights into eternal truth and justice, not, not in men's better insights into eternal truth and justice, but in changes in the modes of production and exchange. They very specifically That's said, not ethical. we can't just sit around and think about what's best. We have to go out and apply things in the material world. That has to nothing to do with, e okay, you realize that Marx had a, had a doctorate, right? Like clearly sitting and thinking is part of the process. I think it's okay to sit down and read out a few hypotheticals to learn an ethical system. Like, like, would you, would you like say this to some kid in kindergarten? Like, you know, action is what we need. Like, uh, like, yes, it's okay to do hypotheticals. It's okay to learn ethical systems. And by the way, rule utilitarianism is really applicable with socialism. It is incredibly naturally, almost intuitively, uh, uh you know, um, in line with the moral, assertions a person might make to, to argue in favor of socialism. Martin uh, Engels did not just sit around thinking, okay, like in their brains. We're not First talking all, about just sitting active. around. Wait, it's are you against all, the concept of, base, of philosophy? You have to base your analysis on objective data. And there are two sources of objective data. There are, there's the material world, and then there are objective social relations. That's the way Marx and Engels put it anyway. Okay, let, let, me, let me test your intuitive system then. Okay, um, mm -hmm. let's let's hit it then. Is it wrong to hit a person? It absolutely depends on the material conditions and the situation and the objective social relations at play. There's no universal social answer relations. to that question. Okay, I agree. So one might Do say that social relations. Do I need to define that term? Circumstances matter. Um, yeah. Okay. So I agree with that.
So let's say, um, okay, let's let's use an example where all of the cases are known. You said that I was too vitriolic to Luna. Why is that bad? I said that you need to look at the evidence that it's being presented to you and, and consider whether you think it's bad or not. And I'm I asking you to apply this kind of analysis to your own platform. Well, I've done that, but you clearly think it was bad because otherwise you wouldn't take issue with it enough to talk to me about it. You, you think, think I've acted in error. Here, because I saw evidence, which is that after you talked about her, not just once, but every time you've done a stream about her, I saw a huge uptick in people throwing racist, vitriolic shit at her. Why is that, that bad? That she doesn't usually receive on that scale. That's the evidence I presented to you. Okay, why is that bad? I was bad? convinced by that. Excuse me? Why is that bad? Why is that bad? Why is that bad? Because a human being suffered because of, as a direct result of actions that you performed. Do you think that human suffering is always bad? What about when we shot Nazis? I don't think that Luna, if you think that Luna deserves to suffer, do you think Luna deserves to suffer? Is that your point here? By, by the, being wait, attacked wait, by racists? Is that what the you're one, saying? You're the one who said that it was bad because a person suffered. So logically, I extend you from that. You okay. think when suffering yes. are happens. You, are you denying that it's bad that Luna suffered because racists sent racist vitriol at her. I'm asking you your position. Why was it bad? I would say that it's, it's definitely bad. Because Why? it's promoting the racist system of white supremacism, which oppresses million, billions of people around the planet. Why is that bad? It is bad because we should seek to liberate all of humanity from oppression. Why? So the main... So, so the main point of Marx and Engels is to, you, you realize that the main point of dialectical materialism and historical materialism is to free humanity from all class antagonisms so that we can finally begin writing history ourselves. That's, that's, that's basically the way that they put it. Why did so they that think that was worth the, doing? Because throughout, the, throughout modern history, or throughout history since class antagonisms arose, let's put it that way, Human beings have been driven forward by oppressive relations with the means of production, and that limits humans, and it causes a lot of suffering. I and don't understand these is... terms. You already said suffering can be good or bad. Limiting? What makes these things bad? I don't understand. Okay, limiting oppression, giving people the ability to develop their own, uh, their own material conditions and to have... The, the, the freedom to do what they want. That's what they talked about in Why should socialism. people have freedom? Should people have freedom to murder? Vash, freedom to, to, serve, to, to, li to live? It, I, I... <laughs> it would be nice to have an ethical <laughs> system you could apply to answer these questions, right? No, okay. A person has the right... This is, okay. Let's go back to the material conditions, all right? If you're being oppressed, right? If you're being oppressed and somebody is forcing you to work for them as a slave or a wage earner or whatever, that is a form of exploitation, okay? Isn't that their what freedom? What is bad, excuse me? Isn't that their freedom? You're talking about Isn't restricting the freedom, freedom of people to do unto others what they will. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're saying that you don't like it when people <laughs> exercise their freedom to oppress others. You said you value okay. freedom. Vosh. Mm -hmm. Listen. The fact of the matter is that Marx and Engels believed that exploitation through class antagonism is not good. Uh -huh. Do you agree or disagree with that? Oh, I oh, we're talking about what I oh, I agree. I, I think I'm a Marxist, at least in some respects. But I have an ethical okay. system that informs the reasons why I feel Marxism is worth following. And what is that? Rule utilitarianism. Or I guess some people say you can fold that into act utilitarianism. So let's just say utilitarianism. Fine. But uh, you, uh, you, but there's no. Uh... Uh, this isn't okay. a matter of idealism. It's a matter of understanding why we fight for what we fight for. 
What you're arguing for is intuitive morality, which is exactly what leads to every goddamn pogrom and mass slaughter that's ever happened throughout history. When people post hoc justify what's right or wrong, only the construction of and adherence to moral <laughs> systems that you can understand can prevent that kind of stuff from happening. And it's why I'm hammering on it right now. I don't like it when you're you're laughing like, oh, hypotheticals, oh, well, thinking. Material conditions you know, will dictate what's acceptable or not. If, and, 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 and the only way to, to we have to, okay. Like, why are you against the concept? Do you think you're smarter than, like, all of, like, ethics? Like, the whole philosophy? Like, no, that's, but my ethics that's, like, the most it, complicated... So, so, okay. If you are... I don't know how to explain this to you. Like, like you have to look at history, right? That's one way we could, That's one way to look at it. So, whenever people have been enslaved, if they rise up and use violence to liberate themselves, then that is probably acceptable, because they had material conditions in which they... Violence was being... Okay, so so like so, the Nazis rising up against the Nazis was acceptable. Yes, no, no, no. The, the after World War, after World War One, the Nazis claimed that Jewish bankers were holding the country down through, and that was false consciousness because that wasn't actually happening. How can you that tell? That was false consciousness. They constructed a moral utilitarian rule that was that did not align with reality. They and were not utilitarian. Wait, the Nazis world world. were not utilitarian. Careful with that. No, they I were did. very, very not utilitarian. The um, point is that they were their their ideology was not aligned with reality. How how can you tell? Because Jews don't actually control banks in the world. There was a disproportionate number of Jewish control of banks in Germany during the Weimar Republic. All right, Josh, we're done here. Thank you. Goodbye. This is, uh, that's all I need to hear. You don't have an ethical, oh my God. <laughs> I'd run too if I was him. Oh, that was good. God. I can't believe people in my community like that guy. That was funny as hell. You gotta lean into the clips. That's what you gotta lean into. Oh, in case anyone's curious about what was happening there, that guy was actually too stupid to have a conversation with. He actually thought that the construction of an ethical system and using hypotheticals to understand ethics meant that you were some kind of anti-material idealist. He was dismissing the concept of philosophy. Marx was a philosopher. I mean, like, Mar like Marx would be, like, laughing. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't he couldn't comprehend the idea of an ethical system. Did he learn anything though? I I feel like for a bit there he got close to understanding. Um. He got close to understanding when I was asking like, well, why is freedom wrong? Why is suffering bad? So on and so on. Like, yeah. Dishonest or stupid? No, I think he. I don't know. He might just be stupid. Vosh, give us an actual lesson on rule utilitarianism now, please. I'd like to see how you'd answer these questions. Dude, this is so easy, man. It's so easy, okay? So, as a moral anti-realist, I don't think there's any way to objectively determine what is good or bad in the universe. However, I do think that you can build systems which adhere to subjectively determined uh, moral principles that we call axioms or first principles. My four first principles pertain to the well-being of sentient people. The actual specifics aren't that important because things get fuzzy when we're talking about meta-ethics. The rule utilitarian sort of mindset is things are good if the outcomes of the actions not only have uh, a positive utility, but lead to the construction of rules which also have positive utility. So using that ethical framework, you can then go back and look through all of human history and have like a, a strong understanding of whether something is good or bad, you know? There is no ethical system that'll give you perfect answers to everything. Um, uh, uh, dialectical materialism is, is fairly similar um, in, in the sense that it's, it's a framework for understanding. Though dialectical materialism is not an ethical system like he seemed to think it was. Um, do you ever think about using less inflammatory hypotheticals to avoid getting more? I don't care. Also, it happens anyway. Who cares? Jesus. You guys are the most annoying part. You're like, clipped, clipped. Who cares? I don't care. Um, he's got Luna in his stream now, which he's bad-mouthing you. I feel like any obligation that I had to take him seriously probably vanished when he was giving me shit for being mean to his wife. And, um, and then there was a tweet of Luna calling me a pedophile. 
and non-compete was like, uh, uh, well, well, technically she didn't say it, you know, that's not, it's not the same. And she's just quoting it when it wasn't even a quote. And then I was like, well, can I explain why it's wrong? He was like, no, that's idealism. Like, yeah, no, I, I know there are still going to be people in my community who, um, who, uh, who, who post to my Reddit and are like, um, I think Vosh was really uncharitable, but guys, the God's honest truth is that I was really nice to non-compete. I was really nice. Look at how quickly his worldview falls apart. Like, he couldn't answer anything, like, basic ethical questions, and he was, like, stumbling, like, like, uh, well, the freedom, the freedom to, to live, like, yeah, they, they have nothing, you know? It's really pathetic. The, by the way, just to be clear, the reason why, um, the, the reason why I'm okay with being mean to these guys is because they're like the cancer of socialism, you know what I mean? Like, the existence of people like him are worth, like, negative three me's. They're like, a Every person who's moved leftwards from people like that are like a like a a, a a harm to the movement. You know, you're being built to uh you to at at best have a poor understanding of these issues. We didn't even get we didn't even get to dialectical materialism. The idea of being educated on philosophy from that guy is laughable. But um, it, there there are people that's a bit harsh. No, I don't think so. Um. I think it's fine, you know? I really, the thing is, I really don't think that what I'm asking is like a really high bar. Like, like, pardon me for coming off presumptuous, but if a person is making content online for socialists, I expect them to not think that the concept of a hypothetical is Hegelian idealism, which entails not actually acting on reality. Like, I think that's a really basic supposition. Like, a really, really basic belief system, you know what I mean? Um, it's like a, a very low bar, you know, you can expect them to go over. I mean, the thing Vosh said about banks was pretty stupid, considering Nazis' views on bank ownership was incoherent nonsense. So, Matty is chaos. I don't know if you noticed what was going on there, but I was posing challenges to his system to see if there was any consistency in how he would address those questions. And seeing as how he fumbled for five minutes and then left, I'm going to say what I believe, which is, I don't actually think they're left-leaning, I just think they kind of lucked into the right system, you know? It's like Professor Flowers. I think that Professor Flowers is basically just an anti-white racist who stumbled into a misunderstanding of decolonial uh, terminology. Um, you know? Uh, but, but there will always be people, there are always bad people who will mask their ideology through sort of euphemism and adjacent positions. You've got people like them. There are people on the far right who are like this. Guys, how many super far right fasci types cloak their positions in the front of like nationalism, you know, not like hyper nationalist fascist, whatever, you know, but just like regular American nationalism. That's like the most common thing in the book, you know? Uh, after the Reagan administration, or, or after the Nixon administration, we had the whole Southern strategy talk about how language on race got euphemized into being about, you know, uh, tax codes and forced busing and crap like that. Um, you should always be on the lookout for people with really bad underlying ideas, um, dressing it up in ways that sound good to you. And, uh, if, if, if non-compete can't mount an ethical argument against the Holocaust. <laughs> if he doesn't have an answer to that, <laughs> then he has no right talking on these issues, you know? Man. You gonna comment on the Noah defending Professor Flowers thing? I don't care. Listen, there, there are a bunch of directions you can go in this. I do think a lot of people on the left are just castrated whiteies or whatever who just refuse to disagree with women of color. Um, you know, uh, I, I, like, there's only so many times I can see, I, I can only see this same pattern so many times, where, like, some woman comes out with some insane shit and people defend them or whatever. Um, Vosh, you definitely know people aren't going to get the difference between you hanging up on Mr. Girl and this preempt them. I didn't hang up. What? That'd be kind of a reach.
I think at a point, NC didn't even get you were discussing his ethical system, and that's what led to the hang-up. Well, I don't think he's very bright. It just makes it seem like you're defending Nazi stance being correct. No, I think if you're a reasonably intelligent person, you can understand that uh, I was challenging him to construct. I literally said, or, in the middle of that, I literally said, oh, I agree with Marx. I value freedom. Uh, I think those things are important. I'm challenging you. And then I continued, you know. Uh, but that's okay. Your anti-fans aren't reasonably intelligent. Can we, can we stop? with the um can we stop with the concern trolling i'll start banning for it i'm really getting tired of you guys anytime anything happens Ooh, what about the clips Ooh, don't you think your optics could have i optics pilled you guys way the f too hard we're done with that okay you guys are the bad optics every time anything decent happens you guys are clamoring around my feet like fucking children Oh, you people who were going to take you out of context anyway will take you out of context here i don't care stop jesus Christ. I'd rather have a dogmatic community who just agrees with everything that I say than have a community that's so obsessed with second-guessing me that they start whining about optics in any situation like this. Listen, here's the real optics consideration, okay? Here's the real problem uh, with this picture. Um, Non-compete can't explain why the Holocaust was bad. Uh, that's pretty bad. What's the right answer, though? Well, I'll tell you this much. It's not... Wait, what do you mean, what's the right answer? Do you seriously need an... From a rural utilitarian perspective, the killing of six million innocent people as part of state machination... Ten million, I guess. Has negative outcomes. Like, the, the, the issue is that he didn't have any, like, thing to go back to. You know what I mean? If you're a utilitarian, for example, you can go back to the concept of utility, whether a consequence has a good or a bad outcome. If you're like a deontologist and you're, you're cringe, as deontologists are, um, you can go back to like the categorical imperative or like intrinsic or inherent or like categorical wrongs or, you know, yeah, categorical wrongs, I guess. Um, there's always something you can defer to. It's part of forming a system. That's what dialectical materialism is about, forming a system to help you understand. Um, but if you don't have that, what are you even, what are you doing? Oh, and I wanted to be clear, by the way, I would not have gone down that road and bullied him the way that I did if it weren't for the fact that he said, not to mention the bad faith stuff about Luna calling me a pedophile, if he hadn't said that the concept of having an ethical system was idealism. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Honestly, Avash, I couldn't explain why the Holocaust was bad any better than non-compete could. I just intuit my ethical positions. That convo was way over my head. Then again, I'm not a political educator with a large audience like him. Look, I, there, I don't think there's a way of determining an objectively correct ethical system. But in terms of the utilitarianism stuff, okay, the whether or not something is good or bad is, um, is generally pretty easy. It's really a matter of assembling the information necessary to determine what's happening, and then to figure out what to do in order to affect good or bad things. The post hoc is easy. You know, the, the future aspirational stuff, that's, that's a lot harder. Um, it's always difficult to figure that stuff out, but in terms of really easy moral cases, like let's say the Holocaust, uh, all you really have to go with is uh, simple as this, you know? I think the state rounding up and killing 10 million people is bad uh, because it's a violation of bodily autonomy and because it contributes negatively to human well-being, uh, both of which are axiomatic preconceptions I value. And then they say, oh, why do you value those axiomatic preconceptions? And then you stab them to death because axioms are um, uh, 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 first principles and don't have to be justified. And that's how philosophy works. Wait, were Jews really overrepresented in banking in Nazi Germany, or is it just a meme? Um, like, ve like slightly, like very slightly, but like, no, Jews didn't do anything. Like, there was any systemic problems the Weimar Republic experienced were in no way, shape, or form a product of like the ethical, or, or sorry, the like an ethnic, uh, uh, like Jewish thing or whatever. It was a complete scapegoat, you know. Um, same. That's how the Jewish thing has always worked, you know. It's like. They see one Jewish guy with, like, one extra gold coin. They're like, oh my god, all Jewish people are robbing money from us Gentiles. Let's go. Um, it goes like that every time.
you know. I know it's long, but can we watch the video he made on you? Ooh, we probably should. The problem was that he couldn't explain why it was bad, which is really bad if you're a politics streamer. Well, well I don't think he streams, but uh, yeah, I'd say it's I'd say it's pretty bad. Um, we probably didn't miss out on much because he mostly just wanted to explain what he thinks dialectic materialism means. Which, as demonstrated by that convo, I the thing that gets me is these are the people who talk down to me about theory. Oh, he streams generally. Okay, okay, never mind. Um, this is this is the thing that gets me. The people, the the. Do you guys want to know why I always say I've read all theory? There's actually a very specific reason why. It's because something happened over and over and over again. Like, I think like about a dozen times. Okay, and it was this. I would talk with some tanky type. And they would say something incredibly stupid. And then they would cite a passage from a book and go like, see, Marx thought this. And I would have to, and now I'm in a position, because I can't fact check them on the fly. Um, and now I'm in the position of uh, either disagreeing with what they're saying Marx said, or like looking into it and like engage, because now they've, they've essentially like, um, They've Bible quoted their, their, their position. And then the debate ends, you know, and I look it up and they were completely wrong. Just completely incorrect. This has happened so many times. Almost every time. That every time theory gets thrown at me to justify some stupid position, they were wrong about the theory. So the, th the thing is, like, I am just over and done with these illiterate fucks uh, wasting my time during these conversations. Uh, and I would rather just say, I've read all theory and dare them to prove me otherwise. And so far, nobody has. All the conversations, it's been over a year, not a single conversation has arisen where somebody's exposed a lack of knowledge. Not one. Not a single time. Theory related. And you know why? It's because they haven't read theory either. They haven't read it either. So, so I just get, I so I don't have to worry about it. You were clearly running him to your point all Socratically, and he was just desperately looking for a clippable moment to escape the heat. Bosch was Holocaust denying, so I hung up because I have no values. No, I'm actually this sweaty. Well, he was probably looking for an out. Yeah, he was probably looking for an out. Yeah, this was after the Professor Flowers thing. Didn't I end? I ended up being completely correct about everything that I said about Professor. I, I actually astonish myself with how correct I am. Um, Professor Flowers. Uh, literally, yeah, look at this. Somebody found this on Twitter. This is from two days ago. Like, incredible stuff, right? You literally equivocated colonizer with white in multiple streams. This is genuinely so funny that you would want me to be ashamed about this. If you, this should be disqualifying from the entire left. The idea that Literally just admitting, by colonizer, I'm using it as a dog whistle for white. But, like, people don't care. Nobody cares. Noah, the coward, uh, Noah Sampson, who said that he liked me in a video, and then later posted, like, a minute-long retraction in the following video because uh, people gave him shit for it, and he backed it up. Uh, Noah uh, uh, doesn't seem to care, and I don't care. I don't understand. Is that... This is, this is the hill I'm dying on. Ethnic cleansing is bad. Oh my god. What a, what a nefarious position to hold. FD Signifier also said that white colonizer on Twitter after seeing why he's real. FD Signifier goes with it too. Guys, I'm sorry. You guys can like who you like, you know. I'm not telling you to not like other people. Uh, but, but yeah, um, if I get warning vibes from a person, I'm right, like, every single time, basically. A lot of people on the left are just here for the worst reasons. Um, I don't know. The funny thing is that the performative self-flagulation of, of a bunch of these, like, uh, you know, the, the, the whiteies, the performative self-flagulation from the whiteies uh, on the left is a very liberal predisposition, I think. Um, you know, when I, when I think of... Um, when I, when I think of white people, like, prostrating themselves to apologize to POC or whatever, I tend to think of liberals who are internally racist and are compensating for the feelings of guilt they have. You know, I, don't, I didn't really think of this being a problem in the left, like the proper left, you know?
to always white people. Yeah, I wonder about that too, you know? The thing that really weirds me out, and like, I hope, I hope this doesn't get misinterpreted, but like, I follow a lot of small lefty YouTubers and streamers. Like, I try to pay attention to like smaller communities so that I don't get too in my head. And there are so many awesome, like, POC creators who get like no attention, you know? And then it feels like the ones that the online left always jumps to, to support are the worst ones, <laughs> you know? It's really weird, like, because I very rarely see like these big, like, like jumps to, to, the, to the support of like the really cool, the cool ones, not even people in my orbit or whatever, just generally cool creators. But like every, like how many times has this happened? Uh, Mel? Um, Luna? Um, Professor Flowers? Stuff like that. It just, it feels like whenever the jump happens, I don't know how much of this is like performative self-hatred or what, but I had this conversation. I never thought it would end up being some of an issue. Want to name some of the cool ones you're thinking of? I should do a list. I'll, I'll do a list. I'll do a list sometime. I could pull that together. I need to find a way to access my old, like, Twitch stuff, though, because my Twitch account got deleted, you know? Um, so. Uh, yeah, like, even this. I never actually thought that Professor Flowers would be, like, a thing that people really got... Like, I never thought that would be a thing, pe like, that would, like, be an issue, you know what I mean? It'd be one of the relatively uncontroversial things, especially considering how calm and patient I was. Nor have I gotten any evidence of harassment towards her. It's not even like anything PF said was that extreme either. I, I don't... It's ethnic cleansing. I don't get it. I think non-compete was so upset because under his ethical framework, if the Jews had disproportionately owned the banks, then the Holocaust would actually be justified. Ooh, that's actually a really good point. If his... If all he has is like, you know, rise up oppressors, etc., etc., you know... I don't think he actually would have had a defeater to that. I wish we could have gone just a few more lines. Ooh, that would have been really funny. He never would have admitted to it, though. He would have pivoted. They always pivot. They never, they never hold to their positions. They never, ever, ever do. Never once. Notice how non can be try to say Nazis have the same ethical system as you? Guys, you could not imagine a less consequentialist group of political ideologues than the Nazis. But he was like, you know, the Nazis are doing utilitarian, like... The not the Nazis. The 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 Nazis were making utilitarian. No, they fucking weren't. Are you kidding me? In the in the SS, if you even brought up utilitarianism, they probably shot you in the back of the head right there, and then threw your whole family into a burning ditch. Jesus. Yeah, they would say utilitarianism is, is like a Jewish brain poison or some shit. Yeah. Oh God. It's good. It's good. Yeah, fascists do not like utilitarianism at all. They hate utilitarianism. Also, I've never argued with a fascist who used utilitarian and, like, ethical systems to argue their point, ever, you know. You think VDSers are only mad because you have a coherent belief system? No, they just don't realize they don't. I think if they had coherent belief systems, though, uh, they would be less mad at me, you know? I can't believe he thought that constructing a hypothetical was idealism. I actually can't believe that. Who is that? Where is that quote from? The person who said that the ability to construct and entertain hypotheticals might be the most important distinction between a learned and unlearned person. Like, and that was said back in like the 1800s or something. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Like, yeah, the, the ability to form hypotheticals is literally biologically one of the things that distinguishes us from the animals. That's a, that's a real thing, by the way. Uh, other animals can't construct them. We have the ability to, I think. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're unique in that respect. The ability to construct alternate versions of how things might be, and then to learn from that, to be able to learn from a thing that hasn't actually happened, is, like, that's the reason why we built fire escapes before fires take buildings, you know? That's the, like, everything, like, all scientific research is based on the conceptualization of different outcomes based on hypotheticals that we derive from existing information. Like, it's, li like, it's, it's so essential. It's like everything, you know? Um, yeah. Bad example, true. We did, we did construct fire escapes a lot later than we, fire, fires happen. 
Isn't that just learning from the past? Not for scientific investigation. Sometimes you can't you can't really learn from the past to like invent a new thing. Not exactly. You have to learn how to construct information in a new novel way and then learn from that. I mean, th this is just how humans are. Like, were original Nazis not utilitarians? You mean 1930s Nazis? No, they were like, I don't think the Nazis generally had a coherent ethical system, but they were definitely deontologists. I don't like, I, like the... Every fascist I've ever argued with was things are bad because they're bad. I mean, maybe deonto maybe deontology is even too charitable. I think it might just be divine command theory, and the divine command was like some kind of arbitrary, you know, um, you know, collective like nation bloodline kind of thing. Like what, like whatever is good for the fatherland, like you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They they did not have a coherent ethical system. That much I know for sure. Um, no, it doesn't contradict materialism at all. They're completely different things. Idealism and materialism aren't about ethics. Well, they can be, depending on your definition of idealism. Um, but, yeah. Damn, man. Why, why does it gotta be like this? Why does it always gotta be, why does it always gotta be a war? I uh, know Samson is pro-genocide, that's sad. Vosh underlings. Zan's been doing this longer than me. Crawling out of their little hidey holes to do some dunking. Very good stuff. We love it, folks. It's not really a redress of the position here. It's just kind of being snarky. Um, but, yeah. I thought Noah was cool. Look, yeah. The online left is uh, not in, in, in the best place. Could be better. It might be prudent to reach out and chat. Noah wouldn't talk to me. Not a chance. Um... Noah, I think it's interesting that you go out of your way to be very amenable to people all over the left. And this is the first real vitriol I've seen from you. And it's the attack you're levying is a perceived relationship to me. You should do more debates with random crazy chuds. Left wing infighting is depressing. Infighting? What do I have in common with non-compete? The, one of the big problems I have is that people even consider these guys a part of the left. non compete I mean, not Noah. So Noah will go there too. Zach Zizi also recently engaged in this cowardice. Cowardice? Which one is it again? Cowardice, right? It's cowardice. Yeah. Yes, yeah, cowardice there. Where's the, um... Yeah, this one. Vosh doing a live reaction to a Luna Oi video about fucking dialectical materialism has to be the pinnacle of everything leftist debate culture has been going towards. No one involved understands what's happening, and it doesn't even matter. Like... Like... What was the issue? Check out non-compete anarchism and practice videos, super based, you would all agree with them. Well, unfortunately, uh, Radical Reviewer, like, like a large building, uh, you know, all it takes is one little break in the foundation. Uh, my man can't explain why the Holocaust was bad, and uh, he was a disingenuous fucking weasel, and uh, yeah, no, it's difficult out here. Also, didn't, didn't he, um, wasn't he that one who said that he wanted, like, anarchist re-education camps or something? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that was him? Yeah. The theory coming back home to roost. The anarcho-police state. Yeah, Noah Samson's on this, too. Wild stuff, man. Radical reviewer, I think the principal issue with him is that he might be kind of fucking stupid. Yeah, it's, look, it... it we, we can't, there, there's a, a finite um, reservoir of charitability that I can offer, but like, I'm always hearing this secondhand, why should I like any of these people? Why shouldn't my community just be mean to them? Re like, real question, right? Like, wh why, like, why not? Like, make the affirmative argument, you know? Because uh, all I get from these people is harassment. That's it, you know? Now, I might be a, a great titan, you know, a giant in the online left space. But when there are dozens and dozens of these itty-wicky little 
lefty communities, you know, calling me a pedophile, racist, transphobe, blah, blah. Um, you know, collectively it adds up. Power of collective action, baby. Um, why should I care about any of them? You know, it's not my fault that every single time they get brought on my streams, they make themselves look like a fool. Like, that's not my fault. I was pretty nice to him. Feel like you made your career by punching up. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Punching up is great and all, okay? That's why I'm doing it now. Uh, reactionary thought is globally prominent. That's why I'm attacking these uh, far-right revisionists uh, who can't condemn the Holocaust ethically. Uh, no, no. Obviously, lines have to be drawn. You know. Boundaries have to be set. Not all these people can be part of the online left. You on good terms with Lance still? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like Lance. Lance is cool. This is the energy that I get. This is a future Luna tweet, but unironically. Vosh, you think Vietnam defanging Marx in their colleges is similar to Marx in my U.S. history, U.S. college philosophy book defanged? I, I actually think you could probably learn more about socialism from, from, like, American education than you ever could from Vietnamese education. Because it seems like the approach that America has taken towards Marx and academia is simply marginalizing him and not talking about him that much outside of, like, very specific cases. Whereas the approach Vietnam seems to have taken is completely bastardizing everything that he believed as part of promoting a state, like, propagandizing engine, you know? Like, conforming him and other thinkers into a, you know, a bastard, uh, uh, amalgam state ideology. I think the former is actually preferable. Not gonna lie. Oh, we got the Reddit. Hold on. Gotta fill time for the next debate! Do you think most Vietnamese citizens think like Luna? No! God! 97% of them said they liked free markets and Luna couldn't cope with it. Um, let me see. Well, I finally know why people hate Vosh. So Vosh always been an edgy guy. Vosh is now a spite demon. You know the supervillain trope where the bullied kid says fine, will become exactly what they're thinking? Well, after the American Johnson debate, Vosh said sometimes you gotta lean into the clips, you know, the clips that call him a transphobic pedophile. Vosh embraced the role forced upon a villain of the left. What the fuck armchair psychology shit is this? What? In every hypothetical he gave her, he mentioned black people committing crime, which is disturbingly similar to Voshkin pedophilia anti-Semitic hypotheticals only after American got uncomfortable with those specifically. The guy just got pushed and pushed and pushed till flowers and uh, American rage quit, so Vosh claimed victory. Oh my god! Jesus Christ! I've got to chill, my friend. It's challenging him. If, listen, if, you, if you're going to lecture me on ethical systems and you don't have answers to very basic questions, yeah. You have professional concern trolls in your sub. Also, leaning into the clips just means that I don't give a fuck if people clip me. Because, guys, it happens anyway. Oh, my God. I'm constantly trending because I'm being clipped. It clearly doesn't matter. There's no point in worrying about it. If anything, forcing myself to conform my speech to to limit the likelihood of that happening, like, all it does is make me anxious when I'm talking. I don't think your optics are bad. My optics are only bad because people want my optics to be bad. It's like saying that a person's makeup is bad, and, like, the only photos that are being taken of that person are of, like, 8K zoom-in photos, like, where, so you can see the pores of their skin, you know? Like, if, if people are determined to hate you, you can do or say anything, and they'll hate you for it. There's no getting around it, you know? It's possible to make the process worse, admittedly, but, like, the, it, categorically avoiding the entire thing is just not... We should go over all these people. I'm starting to question what kind of future left Bosch is a benefit to if he isn't willing to maintain charity and resist ableism and condescension with people who aren't understanding his points slash intentions. After, after the thing with Luna calling me a pedophile and him refusing to acknowledge it, and after him saying that hypotheticals or idealism, me asking him calmly questions that he can't answer is me being... God damn, dude. Oh my god. The subreddit's really a problem. The community's a problem. I'm on to you guys. I'm on to you and your shit. Speaking of purges. We just ban these people because they're annoying. We should just ban people for being annoying, right? 
Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. We should just ban. Honestly, like it would just fix everything. I'll just do it. It's easier to do on the phone. Um, the uh, it's every time anything happens, it's the the weird selective charitability. I feel like I feel like a lady could come on and she could call me like a transphobic pedophile, whatever. And then you know I'll like be a little mean to her and. Uh, and, and and chat will be like, uh, you really should reconsider the the behavior of your. Oh my god, no, the anger is already passed. That's fine. We don't need to ban anyone. Yeah, this guy gets it. This Twitter thread's fine. Honestly, the idea that the reason it was bad to do the Holocaust was because Jews weren't disproportionately in control is pathetically weak. So what if they were? Would it have been acceptable then? I was literally two sentences away from asking this, but he couldn't handle it. I think he knew. Do you think he knew, or do you think like? Oh, sorry, Reddit thread. Do you think he understood that, that he was being backed into an unwinnable position on an optically impossible thing? Or do you think, uh, do you think like a, like a dumb animal, he was just trapped and wriggling out of a trap? You use that example because it was supposed to be easy, right, lol? Uh, I just think that people on the left should be able to explain why the Holocaust was bad. You know, that's just my, all, all the takes, all the takes I'm getting destroyed for, you know? Uh, I don't think ethnic cleansing was good. You know, uh, I don't think the Holocaust was good. Yeah. I'm, I, I guess I'm just too old fashioned for the modern left. Would you say you're the last of the old school left sexuals? True. So true. Uh, extremely true. Vosh, you expected him to create an entire system on the spot when he didn't even know what an ethical system was. Dude. Unironically, if you don't have an ethical system, you should shut the fuck up about politics forever. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, I wanted him to admit that not having an ethical system was hurting him. Like, and he was floundering, dude. Can I, can, actually, can I find that portion of the conversation? I, I want to react back to it because I was just... I was just asking questions. I wasn't really processing what he said because, of course, the Socratic method isn't about my understanding of the issue here. We're testing his. Um... I was just kind of having fun with like the next question to ask, but if I um yeah, we're gonna react to my own stream vod. Let's go. Um yeah, we're gonna react to my own stream vod. Let's go. Yeah, I really did clean up with my beard trim. Guys, their own material conditions and to have Vosh. Freedom to to serve it was worth <laughs> doing. As antagonisms so that we can finally begin writing history ourselves that's 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 basically the way that they put it why did so they think that, that was worth doing because throughout the throughout modern history or throughout history since class antagonisms arose let's put it that way human beings have been driven forward by oppressive relations with the means of production and that limits humans and it causes a lot of suffering i and understand these is, terms you already said suffering can be good or bad limiting what makes these things bad i don't understand okay limiting Oppression, giving people the ability to develop their own, uh, their own material conditions and to have... Hold on, I'm sorry. Vosh just labeled my tweets as engaging in cowardice and stream lol, I mean of all things. Zexeasy, you're doing it here! You're still doing it! You're doing it here too, Zexeasy. Oh my god. Jesus. The, the, the freedom to do what they want. That's what they talked about in Why should people have freedom? Should people have freedom to murder? Vosh. Freedom to, to serve, to, to live, to live? It, I, I... <laughs> Look at this! It's nice to have an ethical system you can apply to answer these questions, right? No, okay. A person has the right... This is, okay. Let's go back to the material conditions, alright? If you're being oppressed, right? If you're being oppressed and somebody is forcing you to work for them as a slave or a wage earner or whatever, that is a form of exploitation, okay? Isn't that their what freedom? What is bad, excuse me? Isn't that their freedom? You're talking about Isn't restricting the freedom, freedom of people to do unto others what they will. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're saying that you don't like it <laughs> no, when people not. exercise their freedom to oppress others. You said you value okay. freedom. Vosh. Mm -hmm. Listen, the fact of the matter is that Marx and Engels he can't, he like, this is so, God, like, ah, these are the people who fucking try to give me shit.
on philosophy and theory. Oh my God. Believed that exploitation through class antagonism is not good. He, see, he doesn't have an ethical system. He only has dogmatism. This is the thing. He's not saying anything. He's just defaulting back to his rote understanding of basic Marxist terminology. But he doesn't actually know how to apply it. This is this is just like it's like, it's like giving a it's like giving a, a toddler a bunch of like letter blocks and the the words they assemble at random, like trying to interpret meaning from them. Do you agree or disagree with that? Oh, I oh we're talking about what I oh I agree. I, I think I'm a Marxist at least in some respects. But I have an ethical okay. system that informs the reasons why I feel Marxism is worth following. And what is that? Rule utilitarianism, or I guess. Some people say you can fold that into act utilitarianism. So let's just say utilitarianism. Fine. But you, uh, you but there's no. Uh, this isn't okay. a matter of idealism. It's a matter of understanding why we fight for what we fight for. What you're arguing for is intuitive morality, which is exactly what leads to every goddamn pogrom and mass slaughter that's ever happened throughout history. When people post hoc justify what's right or wrong, only the construction of and adherence to moral okay. systems that you can understand can prevent that kind of stuff from happening. And it's why I'm hammering on it right now. I don't like it when you're. I was so clear about this. I know people are going to be like, oh, he didn't realize you were pressing him to test his own knowledge. You know, he didn't know what you were doing. I was very, very explicit with what I was doing here. You're laughing like, oh, hypotheticals. Oh, the thinking. Material conditions yeah. will dictate what's acceptable or not. If, <laughs> what does that and, mean? And the only way to, to, we have to, okay. Like, why are you against the concept? Do you think you're smarter than like all of like ethics? Like the whole philosophy? Like, no, that's, but my ethics that's like the most complicated. So, so, okay. If you are... I don't know how to explain this to you. Like, like you have to look at history, right? That's one way we. That's one way to look at it. So, whenever people have been enslaved, if they rise up and use violence to liberate themselves, then that is probably acceptable because they had material conditions in which they violence was being. Okay, so so like so, the Nazis. I should have gotten him on the probably there. He said probably. I should have honed in on that. I think rising up against the Nazis was acceptable. Yes. No, no, no. The, after World War, after World War One, the Nazis claimed that Jewish bankers were holding the country down through. And that was Economic false consciousness because that wasn't actually happening. How can you that tell? That was false consciousness. They constructed a moral... So, I like this too, okay? He can't even... Like, his problem with the Holocaust was that the Nazis weren't class conscious. Like, see, this is what I mean. He doesn't have an ethical system. He just has dogma. Um, his, his position here is that the problem with what the Nazis did was that they were wrong about whether or not they had the class consciousness. So what if they were Nazbols? Right? What if they were Strasserites, you know? Like, they, they're, you know, it, like, what if, what if you integrated? Like, there are so many bad outcomes that you could get. You could justify almost anything with this framework, you know? The, yeah, the problem with the Nazis was they, when they were doing the oppression math, they got the math wrong. <laughs> That was the only issue. The, what was the problem with the Nazis? Well, when they were figuring out the whole Jewish question thing, they they forgot to they dropped a zero. They dropped the decimal point one one over, and they they didn't carry the one. You know, oh my god. Uh, well, utilitarian rule that was that did not align with reality they and were not utilitarian wait the nazis world. were not utilitarian careful with that no, they were very very not utilitarian the um, point is that they were their their ideology was not aligned with reality how, how can you tell because jews remember what i said before about how luna was making the mistake of associating dialectical materialism with the concept of empiricism he's doing it here too he thinks, yeah, he thinks dialectical materialism is everything. A political system, an ethical system, an economic system. Yeah, yeah, he, he thinks it's everything, like the whole world, you know? Um, and, and, and in this case, like empiricism too. Like it's, 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 a, it's a metaphysical theory here as well, I guess. Yeah, it's a, fa it's a faith. Like, yeah, let's be clear here. It's, it's a faith, basically. That's it's, it's what it's being used as. It's, it's dogmatic. Um, and like right here, his argument, his, 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 he's literally saying like, if like, imagine like you're watching this with no context and somebody is like, why was the Holocaust bad? You know? And the other person is like, oh, because the Nazis weren't class conscious. They had, they were acting off false consciousness. You know, they were wrong when they said that the Jews controlled the white countries. Like, okay. All right. A anything else? Like, that's what you jump to?
Jews don't actually control banks in the world. There was a disproportionate number of Jewish control of banks in Germany during the Weimar Republic. All right, gosh, we're done here. Thank you. Hey. Goodbye. This is, he can't uh, answer it. That's all I need to hear. You don't have an ethical... Oh, my God. <laughs> he can't answer it. Because that's the thing right there. And this is the thing that makes me sussy-wussy, man. If, if, if he doesn't have an answer to that, and he doesn't seem to, he can't ever argue against a Nazi. Because if his position is that... Uh, you know, the Nazis would be justified if there was disproportionate Jewish control of this industry or another. There is. It's just a product of historical circumstance. It doesn't mean the Jewish question is true, but it is. So he would have to concede that argument, which is insane. You know? Bosh, I think EJ is correct here. False consciousness caused them to attack the wrong targets. So would you have been in favor of them killing 10 million of the wealthiest people in Germany? No, the issue here wasn't just a lack of class consciousness because the Strasserite wing of the Nazi party had class consciousness. And while I did eventually all get long knived in the back, uh, it, 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 they were clearly still bad. The issue was that the ethical system of, of Nazis it completely discluded the 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 just any consideration for the well-being of groups outside of you know their their uh racial ethical or sorry ethnic hierarchy um yeah the 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 fundamental issue here this is not a like class consciousness issue you can be class conscious and be racist those aren't mutually exclusive things at all Hey, Vosh, not trying to study more beep, but legit confused what was the cowardice and engagement. Oh, shit, Zix easy. Zix easy. I don't get it, man. The pro- the- f here's the thing, okay? I feel like I'm a boxer, okay? I'm out there making moves. No, I appreciate you coming in chat, not drama. This is the opposite of drama. I like it when people talk, okay? Um, I'm out there, I'm boxing, okay? I'm people boxing, all right? And I'm fighting like, uh, like a, like a, like a, just a, a, a emaciated, crippled, starving orphan. Okay? And I'm winning. Oh man, am I winning, you know? And then I go on Twitter afterwards, and I see, I see, you know, I see tweets like, uh, really bad performance from both people, you know, really hard to tell who won. Like, what's going on, man? I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I feel like my understanding of dialectical materialism is suitable for the level of analysis I engage in. I don't do crazy theory, like, breakdowns or whatever. If I did, I would definitely, um, you know, I would definitely go into it a bit more in depth. But I think I, I, yeah, I, I think I'm a good springboard for the topic. Um, certainly better than Luna, you know. I guess I'll just wait for the type. But hold on. I think we have that debate in like five minutes. Oh god, we're gonna have to switch gears pretty quickly here. Basically, you're saying the implied condemnation of... No, 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 I just, I don't think I was wrong on any of the dialectical material. I'm sure, and I'm sure if you were to get really specific and in-depth with the theory, there are probably some things that I said that were simplistic, and I totally get that, you know. Um, but I, I feel like Luna Oi's understanding of dialectical materialism is so bad that I could have said basically anything and would have been more correct than the material I was criticizing. Uh, here we go. Okay, let's see. Bosh bad. Bosh bad. Oh, I see the message. Wait one second. Let me accept the friend request from this person. And, uh... uh where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's the button? There we go. Alright, let's call them in five. Alright, what is this? I'll admit I understand from the perspective of being against Ludas not having a high of a bar, whereas coming from is more that dialectics are just so horribly complicated it was kind of ridiculous to be discussed in the video stream format in the first place, wasn't meant to be over-targeting. Okay, so easy. I do get that. I think there is a kind of fundamental absurdity, but, like, that does come off as, like, a sp Like, obviously, if I'm doing a live stream, if live streaming is what I do, if dialectical materialism ever comes up, this is the format in which it's going to be discussed. I don't really have an alternative to that. It's what I do. Um, so... It's, when criticisms like that read as criticisms of content, you know, like, uh, not just of form, 
Um, if, if there's something I'm wrong about, I'm always happy to update my understanding. Though if it turns out somehow that I'm extremely wrong and the real truth of dialectical materialism is that it's when you are in reality and you look at the facts, as Luna Oi seems to believe, uh, then I would rather be wrong. I feel like my incorrect understanding of the issue provides greater utility than the, than the, the hypothetical correct version of the matter. Oh, God. Yeah, we're being, being engaged today. Do you find it odd that a lot of larger left-leaning content creators like ContraPoints, Adam Something, Shu, Hassan, even people like YMS are all fine with you or like you, while everyone else like, nah, fuck that with a few exceptions? Well, I think very large channels tend to be more drama-averse, because the larger you are, the bigger of a tent you have. And the bigger of a tent you have, the less you're going to benefit from, like, punching down on people or whatever. Um, but in terms of, like, yeah, stuff like that, I, there, there are probably a lot of forces that come into play on, on stuff like that. Um, yeah. Is Contra just based as fuck? Well, Contra is pretty based, yeah. The problem is that our level as content creators, not fellow grad students, are basically guaranteed to be very, very wrong about something like Hegel, but I'll keep in mind how I tweet it comes out in the future. Yeah, it was meant to be more about Fornoth. Okay, I get that. Yeah, well, I wasn't trying to talk about Hegel too much. I just think, like, Zex Zizi, you can, you can, you can, I can run it by you if you, you want, but when I talk about dialectical materialism, I just, the way I think about it, at least, and I'm not formally studied on this, but the way I think about it is a, a lens of analysis for understanding human history, society, civilization, blah, blah, is a materialist, or, you know, a modernist theory. It looks at everything, right? Um, which suggests that developments are a product of the antagonism which arises as groups with different material interests conflict and compete with each other. And then before, I use this, um, uh, this, um, this little map of the fault lines. And it's like that, right? It's not like all conflicts ever. Um, it's not like all conflicts ever are a product of like different material circumstances. Um, or whatever. Uh, oh man, where's that map that I used? Oh, I found it the first time. Earthquakes fault lines map. Oh, I can't find it now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's like this, okay? With groups with ma different material interests, those are like the different tectonic plates, you know? And like, not all earthquakes happen where tectonic plates meet. Like, sometimes they happen over here in Maine or New York, you know? But generally, they happen at the point of antagonism between groups with different material interests, right? So you can imagine these are like different classes. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? You guys get that, right? That's my idea. Like, well, why did history happen the way that it did? You know? Well, if you look at it, it seems like a lot of stuff that happened in history was different people wanting different things, fighting with each other in different ways, and the big points in history, the big changes happened then, you know? Or to put it like another way, when did slavery get abolished in the United States? Huh? Was it abolished when the Founding Fathers said slavery was morally wrong? Well, no, that happened a century too early. Was it abolished when the changing economic circumstances post-Industrial Revolution meant that uh, plantation farming was no longer the predominant economic backbone of America and more economic production in the North made it easier to condemn the backwards uh, South? Yes. Yes, that was one of the huge contributing factors. The fact that the greater economic production was tied to non-slavery-based ways of working was one of the big things that facilitated the paradigm shift that led to the Civil War, or to the opposition to slavery that then caused the South to attack Fort Summer, whatever. Um, isn't this historical materialism rather than dialectical materialism? Well, historical materialism is the concept as applied to the history of humanity. Dialectical materialism is the process occurring in that history. They're overlapping terms, you know. If you want to use them interchangeably, I don't think anyone except a pedant would really have a, an issue with it, I guess. Um, because then you could say, like, the antagonism there, isn't this what NC meant? I don't think so. The antagonism there 
would be the uh, the antagonism, I suppose, between the 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 post-industrial revolution bourgeois, the working class, and the slave class, uh, and how the relative wants, desires, and considerations of those groups uh, changed in relative power uh, after the economic situation changed. You missed his exit either. What do you want? Not the worst idea of materialism, but it's not really dialectics. I mean, just to put this all into scope, the term dialectic materialism was made up by Stalin in the first place. It's all a mess. Anyway, I thought the other three questions. Are you going to follow my Twitter now? Well, I mostly follow people on Twitter who are uh, nice to me. Uh, you know, because I'm very shameless about that. Um, but, all right, if you're going to beg, if you're going to twist my knee, you know, um, if, if you're going to hold a gun to my head, MOOC 10101. And no, I mean, well, that's historical materialism, but the dialectical process is, is advanced by the material interests of these groups, you know? Or... If you want to, look, Stalin came up with the term, but the idea, look, okay, it's like this. Listen, everyone shut up, okay? We're going to use bubbles. That's what we're going to use. This is very simplistic, okay? I'm not a modernist. I don't think one theory can figure out everything, okay? Follow this, okay? All right. So he, so we're going to use forces, like, uh, like physics forces, okay? That's what we're going to use, not bubbles, all right? Okay, so up is ending slavery. All right. And down is keeping slavery. See, because down is bad. OK. All right. So listen, here's an up. OK. And this is in 1792. OK. And the up is being uh, up force is being produced by a few things. Here's moral consideration of all involved, particularly the whites. OK. All right. You got it. OK. And then here is the material power of the slaves. It's not very good. All right? It's not very good because they're slaves. They don't have a lot of power, okay? And then here are the down forces, okay? Are you, are you ready for it? Here is the overwhelming economic benefit of keeping slavery. Oh my god. Wow, that's quite powerful. Wow. Oh boy. Wowza. Okay. But then the Industrial Revolution happens, okay? And we, we pop this with like a little... With like a little pin. Fucked up looking hand. There we go. We pop it. Alright? Okay? And now we have the up. Alright? And we have the up. Okay? But now the down is smaller. And then you do the math. And the, what did the material condition? Industrial revolution. Got it. 